biology paper one multiple choice 11th november 2021 is the paper i'm looking at today um let's get to question one 1590 of course question one which of the following are characteristics of all living things something that is found in all living things ejection ejection this is just part of uh, holozoic nutrition like in humans you don't find ejection in amoeba and some organisms so excretion is found in all organisms and nutrition they all have to feed they all have to uh, remove unwanted or waste products from their bodies that's excretion photosynthesis is only found in plants and some species of algae so c is our answer there Number two, the following diagram shows a detailed structure of an animal cell. I can already tell that's our nucleus, a rough ER, smooth ER, Rs or ribosomes. Then we've got the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body right there. Then we've got these vesicles, okay, carrying stuff in there. So which of the labeled parts modifies and transports proteins from the site of synthesis to the site of, to the site of reaction? My answer there is the Golgi apparatus. Okay, Golgi apparatus. It uh, tr it modifies and transports proteins uh, from the site of synthesis, which is the cell itself, to the site of reaction, which can even be out of the cell. Okay, out of the cell. While uh, the ERs functions are usually transportation of materials within the cell. So my take there is B. Number three, the diagram below shows an experiment conducted by a learner. Self, I mean, start of experiment, end of experiment after 12 hours. So we've got uh, distilled water, visking tubing, which is selectively permeable like a cell membrane, then salt solution. So there's pure water here, which is distilled water, then salt with solutes in it or salt solution. I mean, water with solutes in it or salt solution. So osmosis, during osmosis, water moves from a region where it is high in concentration to a region where it is low in concentration. So I expect it to move out of this by osmosis. What is the correct explanation uh, to what happened to the viscin tubing after 12 hours? The viscin tubing shrunk because water molecules moved out of it by osmosis, of course. That's the only correct answer there. Became smaller because of the of it being porous. No. Lost water due to evaporation. No. Uh, shrunk because salt solution moved into it. No. If it's moving in, it's supposed to actually bulge. So our answer there is D. We get to number four. The diagram below shows conditions in four test tubes containing equal amounts of starch and salivary amylase. Starch is a substrate of salivary amylase. And starch, or maybe let me say salivary amylase, uh, works better at pH neutral in the mouth. pH has to be neutral for a salivary amylase to, to work perfect. That's the optimum pH for salivary amylase. And so pH should be 7, so between these two. Then temperature, you follow the human uh, body temperature. That is why sometimes if you want to measure someone's body temperature, you put your, the thermometer in the mouth. Of course, that has to be a personal one. So you don't go for 27. That's 37 degrees Celsius, the human body temperature. So our answer there is D. Um, five, four food samples were tested for each of the following nutrients. Fats, proteins, reducing sugars. Purple is for proteins after you do the burette test. Brick red is for reducing sugars after you do the Benedict test or the reducing sugar test. Uh, white emulsion is for lipids after you do the emulsion test using ethanol. So which food sample contains proteins and reducing sugars? Proteins, purple has to be present, then brick red has to be present. This is B. B is the food sample. Number six. Um... A child is fed on beef, oily fish, cheese, and water. So my answer there for number six, um, which nutrient would be in low levels in this diet? Um, the nutrient that would be, don't worry about my chalk, I was from class, people from class, like jobbing. So my answer there is C. C is found mostly in greenies and fruits and stuff. Calcium can be found in fish, beef, uh, vitamin D can be found in beef, Iron can be found in beef, cheese, so this is found mostly in greens and fruits, so it's the one that is likely to be in, 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 in low levels. Number seven, um, which of the following plant nutrients is essential for germination of pollen grains and growth of pollen tubes? 
and didn't see that one coming but fortunate enough i knew the answer it's boron boron okay it's it's, it's essential for this function germination of pollen grains and growth of pollen tubes boron the following figures show a diagrammatic summary of the main events in the photosynthesis in photosynthesis light okay light from the sun light energy chlorophyll this is now in the plant more like the leaf our water so our water we've got atp there x y hydrogen reactant y this is the dark stage of the dark reactions light reactions water is split into hydrogen and oxygen this is photolysis here this is a carbon fixation so hydrogen is fixed to carbon dioxide to make product z which is um uh, glucose the first product made in uh, through photosynthesis then the glucose bonds 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 to form a polymer we call starch so uh, name the process x reactant y and product z my process x this is photolysis reactant y is carbon dioxide so already photolysis carbon dioxide and glucose okay i don't know if they were taking this to be starch but in the first uh, instance what is formed is glucose then the glucose is converted to starch okay so i picked on number c i picked on number c i go to number nine uh the diagram shows the diagram shows the structure of bread mold or rhizopus which part releases digestive enzymes these these rhizoids okay hopefully i'm correct but the rhizoids the root like structures the root hyphae the ones that grow into the substrate release enzymes they are then absorb the end products of digestion through what we refer to or what we call saprophytic nutrition so b these are spores this is um uh, the sac containing spores i've forgotten its name so get to question 10 which of the following is a dental formula of a dog you have to know the total number of, of teeth in a dog so and you somehow just have to remember the the, the 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 dentition of a dog and when you do your counting here you'll find that dogs definitely have canines they definitely have canines so the two contesting uh formulas here are these two and out of the two this one has 42 teeth okay how do you find the number of teeth you add the numerators three plus one plus four plus two times two then even here, 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 3, then times 2. Then add the answer for the top one and the bottom one. Then you have 42. Our answer is D. Dogs have 42 teeth. And by 11, the diagram below shows the human alimentary canal, the human gastrointestinal tract, or the human gut. Okay, which of the following, um, which of the labeled parts does peristalsis take place from? Peristalsis is simply the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of muscles in the gut that brings about movement of food it's usually in one direction from the mouth and it moves or the contraction uh, goes in a wave-like form towards the anus okay but sometimes you can have what is referred to as reverse peristalsis that may bring about vomiting so peristalsis is simply how move how food or how substances get to be moved in the alimentary canal okay so the contraction and relaxation takes place in secular and longitudinal muscles found in the walls of the gut so this one is a supporting organ the liver then um on uh here this is just a buccal cavity i think this arrow here so peristalsis starts from somewhere here okay just up after swallowing then down up to the anus so the appropriate answers here are three and four and so our answer here is c three and four which of the following chemicals from cigarette smoke reduces the amount of oxygen carried in the blood the answer there is carbon monoxide hemoglobin has a high affinity for carbon monoxide meaning that it binds easily or easier with carbon monoxide than with oxygen so the co will replace oxygen uh, in, in in its um in, in terms of it being uh, bonded to uh, hb Number 13, the diagram shows apparatus set up to investigate the production of CO2, carbon dioxide, through the respiration of grasshoppers or insects. So, um, potassium hydroxide solution absorbs CO2. They've been given the function. So, this air going in is, is having its 
carbon dioxide removed. So the air that progresses here has, I would say, no carbon dioxide. Then it goes up to this point here where there is lime water or calcium hydroxide, aqueous calcium hydroxide. Um, it, this calcium hydroxide or aqueous calcium hydroxide or lime water can be used to detect the presence of carbon dioxide in a given gas or identifying carbon dioxide. So if carbon dioxide is removed here, it will remain clear. So coming to insects, we all know to say they somehow respire, they release carbon dioxide and take in oxygen. So they release carbon dioxide, the oil, air going into this next tube here has carbon dioxide. So this one will turn milky or a white precipitate will be formed, which is calcium carbonate in soluble in water. So this one will be clear. This one will not be clear. It will be cloudy because of the CO2 coming from these three guys in here respiring. What changes would occur to the lime water in tubes X and Y five minutes after setting the apparatus? I don't know if five minutes would be enough, but yeah, let's say five minutes. Um, tube X, no change. Yes, there won't be any change because the CO2 is removed at this stage. Then tube Y, definitely expect some change because these guys are breathing. So it will turn cloudy. Okay, cloudy or whitish. Or let me just say a white precipitate will be formed, which is calcium carbonate. Our answer is C. Number 14, which of the following is not a self-sexual practice against HIV and AIDS? Abstinence is safe. They're saying not. Consistent and correct use of condoms is safe, okay, to a greater extent. Um, voluntary counseling and testing services is safe because you would know one or two things about the HIV. But use of contraceptive pills, this is for uh, family planning, it's for um, prevention of pregnancy or control over the number of children you want to have. So this one doesn't have nothing, has nothing to do with prevention uh, uh, about of HIV. Yeah, so this one is not safe. C is our answer for number 14. I move my paper to question 15. The diagram shows a sketch of the uptake of water by a plant. This is our leaf here. Uh, this is our stomach, a leaf. Three, these are, this is the mesophyll, spongy mesophyll. Um, so you should have read something about transport in plants. This is grade 11, first topic in biology, if anything. So that's uh, an arrow. And um, if this is lost, if this has to climb through this tube up to the leaf, this should be water, okay? So this is our root hair cell, the cortex, and the like. What processes are represented by the arrows 1, 2, 3, 4? Arrow 1, this should be osmosis. Water enters by osmosis. This one is not labeled. But there are three ways in which water reaches the xylem from the root hair cell. There is a simplast pathway, the vacular pathway, and the apoplast pathway here you have to know them then this is um the transpiration pool in the xylem up the plant this is diffusion okay and this is a uh, transpiration okay this is osmosis actually from cell to cell cell membranes this is osmosis but this is diffusion which is actually transpiration so we get to this we say osmosis is one transpiration pool two osmosis again uh in part three then diffusion which is transpiration our answer here is d our answer is D. I get to 16. I'll end on question 20, then I'll do the other half later. Which of the following donors would safely donate blood to a patient with blood group O? A fellow blood group O patient, I mean person, a fellow blood group O individual. Blood group O only receives from O, but it's a universal donor. It's not a universal recipient. So our answer here is O, which is D. 17, uh, we have the heart there. What are the chambers X and Y in blood vessels D? Okay, look at this heart. This side is thick and this side is thin, meaning this is our left side of the heart. This is our right side of the heart. It has been flipped. Usually the left side is written from this side. Then the answers to this question or the question is what are the chambers X and Y? This is our left auricle or uh, atrium or atrium if you like left atrium then this is our right ventricle so x is our left atrium then this is our right ventricle then blood vessel z if this is the right then this should be the inferior vena cover the inferior vena cover but here there's iota and there's even pulmonary vein so this one here i think they they made an error here this wasn't okay this is the inferior vena cover superior vena cover this is the pulmonary artery this is the iota then this should be uh, the pulmonary veins from the lungs, okay? So they think, I think they made an error there. My answer, my best answer there is A. 
Number 18, that's our kidney. The diagram below shows the kidney and its blood vessels. You've got the artery, then the vein. Okay, the artery is usually shaded, and sometimes it's the one that is put in front. Then we've got the ureter there. What is the name of the blood vessel labeled X? I mean, what is the name of the part labeled X? I think that's the cortex. Cortex, kidney cortex. There's a medulla in here. There should be some kind of boundary, I think. Because um, I don't know if they mean this is our capsule, kidney capsule. Okay, but I, th I thought this is the cortex. The region out of these pyramids here, that's our cortex. There should have been a line here to differentiate or to create a boundary between the cortex and the medulla. But that's our cortex from my best uh, analysis of where the arrow is pointing at for number 18. Two more to go. Um, coming to question 19, the diagram below shows um, a human skin a, or the human skin. The human skin. So we've got nerve endings, capillaries and structure X. What is the name of structure X? That is a sweat gland. This is a sweat pore and this is a sweat gland. Okay. Um, 20, which is my last question for this session. I'll continue with 21 in the next video. But for now, compare the compare, compared to a hormone, a nerve impulse generally has a long-lasting effect. I mean, the response, no. Widespread response, no. Nerve uh, responses are specific okay and they don't really last the the response doesn't really last long uh hormones last longer because of you know they have got a half-life and all those things a fast response yes nerve responses are quite quick our best answer there is b i end here for this uh session i'll meet you or i'll see you or i'll post the next video and do the other 20 questions for now i say bye bye and have a good day